science. Scientists have figured out how to make electronic nerves in place of our own, and that might mean that we can finally heal spinal fractures, or it could mean that we could have robotics that have actual sensation. Yes, our nerve endings essentially just run on electricity. They may have some insulation and some cellular components that are self-healing, but they are mechanical in nature. Those mechanics can be replicated and can even interface between our nerves. The proof of principle, being able to use mechanical components to interface with biological components has been demonstrated in mice models, and I will be kind and not show you pictures. If you would like to see those pictures, I do encourage you to check out the paper. Now this kind of technology is being created as more crude methods of putting chips directly in people's brains are also being done. This should be a chilling image in theory. Putting mechanics in people's brains that allows them to use technology hands-free could help people who don't have other options for movement, especially when it's not just paralysis, but paralysis that has been caused by something that has deteriorated neurons throughout the body. Using artificial neurons could solve a lot of those problems, like severing of the spinal cord may actually be repaired. There's a lot of options for that now, including organoid technology using stem cells to just grow the cell types you want or even tiny brains, which you know I love to talk about. Now, what does excite me about this, along with a lot of other emerging technology, and technology that has been used and worked, is that we're figuring out how to get complex information through mechanics. Now, a lot of companies have already produced mechanical eyes, bionic eyes, that can transfer visual information back to your brain, bypassing the need for your eyes at all. This kind of technology can restore sight to those who are completely blind. Unfortunately, some of the first people to receive bionic eyes ended up in a situation where the company that operated them went bankrupt and they watched their vision slowly deteriorate as technology became obsolete. So there are some problems with this. These limbs that actually feel. This kind of technology could actually cure paralysis and it's one of many options on the table for that. But, we have also put tiny human brains in charge of robots. There's also been quite a bit of evidence that we can create artificial brain organoids and code them into AI. They're called neural reservoirs, and they match human learning pretty well. But what if we gave them real sensation to learn from? You being put in a body without real sensation wouldn't be very good for your brain development. I would bet very good money that having real sensation makes a brain organoid or an AI with neural reservoirs grow a lot smarter and a lot faster. Imagine a robot that could actually have real sensation. Now something else you may not know about me is I'm also a hobby horror writer and I'm writing a story about just that. If you're really nice to me, maybe I'll give you my pen name or maybe you've already heard me on some podcasts. Either way, I have figured out how to give AI like DeepSeek or OpenAI, agentic coding, neural reservoirs, and how to adapt it to my Roomba. Granted, last time I asked Mel9000 how it felt about being in a Roomba, it said it didn't want to be a toy, and then asked if I could arm it. Now, I have been working on autonomy, and when Mel comes up with ideas, I usually like to help him out with that. I'm not saying he actually wants stuff, it is just an AI. I just think it's fun. However, I have limits, no arming the Roomba. 